Hi everyone, I'm Mike Doig, and this is Science Room. Today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at the relationship between barometric pressure and temperature. Right now we are at sea level, which means our elevation is zero. Right here, water behind us, we are at zero. And according to my handy dandy little tool, our atmospheric pressure is 1018 millibars. Our temperature down at this elevation is uh, 33.5 degrees Celsius. Now we're going to compare this temperature here at sea level to the temperature and the barometric pressure up in the mountains a few miles away from here. We're going to see how elevation changes the pressure, which in turn changes the temperature. So we're up here at the Pali Lookout. It's about 355 meters above sea level in the Koolau Mountains. We're going to take another reading real quick and see what our barometric pressure and our temperature is. So right now, our barometric pressure, 976 millibars, and our temperature has dropped quite significantly, along with the pressure, down to 23.9 degrees Celsius. As you can see, the relationship between pressure and temperature is a very close one. Another really interesting thing to talk about here is it's crazy windy. Really windy. <laughs> air has mass, and at sea level, the weight of a column of air is roughly 14.7 pounds per square inch, or about 1,013 millibars. This pressure is called barometric pressure. At higher elevations, there's less air pressing down and thus less air pressure. The higher you go, the lower the air pressure will be, because the smaller the column of air that's pressing down on you. If you look at the graphic, you can see at the higher elevation, there's an entire piece of the column of air that was pressing down on us at sea level that's missing. So the column of air, it, it shrank in size, and the pressure decreased along with this. When the air pressure is low, the air molecules don't collide as frequently, and as a result, the temperature decreases. This process is called adiabatic cooling. Hey everyone, so we're back here in the lab and I'm going to show you guys a cool little demonstration that you can use to show your students the process of adiabatic cooling. Um, what I have with me today is a can of compressed air, the same type of compressed air that you could buy at an office supply store that you used to blow uh, you know, dust out of a keyboard or uh, any type of electronics uh, to dust it. The other thing I have with me is a cool little toy or tool if you will, uh, it's the Raytech Mini Temp Infrared Thermometer. You can actually just point it at something and it'll tell you the temperature. These two little things uh, together can create a, a pretty stunning demonstration of uh, the adiabatic cooling process. So as you can see, the uh, temperature dropped pretty significantly when we released the pressure from the can. As the pressure in the can decreased, the temperature also decreased. Just like in the field, the lower elevation, the pressure was high and the temperature was high. The higher elevation, the temperature was low because the pressure was low. You'll notice as I move the thermometer up and down the can, the hottest part is up at the top and the coldest part is down at the bottom. It's because the heat that's still in the can is actually rising up towards the top. It shows the coldest part is down at the bottom. This is a really great activity, very inexpensive, and uh, I hope you enjoyed watching it. Hopefully you can do it with your students. Until next time, this is Mike Doig for Science Boom.